So welcome on board Medallia. She's an Amoka. She's one of the oldest boats that's going to be doing the Vendée. And we're in our final week of dock work uh, before my sail testing before the Vendée Globe race starts in November. I just thought I'd give you a quick tour around the deck to show you some of the key bits on board. So starting up here, uh, my sail configuration, I'm sailing with just a J2 and a J3 that we attach to these furlers here. Um, and the force stay actually isn't going to have a sail permanently fixed to it because I don't need a jib that big. The boat's already quite overpowered upwind. Uh, so the J2 and the J3 stay up all the time. And then from the bowsprit, I'm flying two code sails, an upwind one and a downwind one. And then I've got two soft smidikers in snuffers. So we're standing by the mast here and you can see that I have a single inline canard. This is quite an old design feature. Um, all of the other boats now, if they're using dagger boards, they have two asymmetric dagger boards. Um, I'm just using this when I'm going upwind predominantly. So when the keel's canted, I drop this down and it provides lift when I'm going upwind. Moving on to the mast, again, an unusual feature of this boat and one that makes it hard for me <laughs> is that I have to come up to the, um, up to the mast uh, to do any of the sail manoeuvres. So if I'm reefing the main, I do it here. Hoisting any of the um, spinnakers or the code sails, I do it all from here. Um, that's why we've got the granny bars on. So they give me the extra security when there's a lot of green water flying over the deck or I'm using a leeward halyard. Um, it's old tech, but there's no way of running the halyards back. So I just need to grin and bear it. And now we are in my teeny weeny little cockpit. Uh, this is it. This is where pretty much all of the action happens. Coffee grinder. This was a new addition this year. So all of last year I had to top grind all the winches, which is really hard work. And I'm so pleased to have this now. Um, and then all the lines, all the sheets um, and furling lines are all led back to here. This under here this is the only um, protection that I get from the elements so unlike all of the other boats in the fleet that have these huge covered cockpits um, I've got this area here again that's how life is um, obviously steering with the tiller uh, and this boat actually one of the great things about this boat is it is an absolute joy to hand steer so I actually do more than the average person just because I like it um, and then if we just look aft from here you can see the dip on the back of the boat so that is where I stack all of my sails downwind uh, so upwind I leave them uh, in the sail locker uh, and move them from side to side and then downwind I have to move them all and put them into that dip on the back there which is quite hard work uh, this is going to be my home for three months now most of the rest of this boat is just empty voids um, because actually what we need is the volume because that makes the boat stronger and more powerful and obviously the waterline length makes it fast but in terms of what I need as a sailor this is it I can live in this space here um, and in a way it's easier for me to be contained in a small space now we're in the sail locker um, I come up here sort of at least once a day uh, and as I said, I keep the, the, up, the sails in here upwind and I'll just move them from side to side. Forward of here, there's two watertight bulkheads. So in total, there's five watertight bulkheads on the boat. Nothing forward of there at all. So they're just closed and I'll do an inspection up there sort of every other day to make sure it's okay. Underneath me here, this is my forward water ballast. So it's divided in half and I can put two tons of water into each side. So normally what I do is I'll put two tons of water into the uphill side, onto the windward side, and then swap it over when I tack. But if it's really big, slammy seas, then I can actually flood both tanks. So I'm putting four tons of water in the bow and it's night and day sailing the boat. I think in anything over 20 knots of breeze, if there's wind, if you don't have the ballast tanks full, then you just smash down on the waves. The whole boat just shudders and shatters and it's, it's horrible. But as soon as you've got the tanks full, you actually start going through the waves instead. Um, and behind me here, these little beauties. 
So this is one of the um, modifications that we're making to the boat, the final mods we're making to bring my lovely boat uh, a bit more up to date. So these are little outriggers and effectively they just extend my sheeting position outboard of the boat. So it gains me about an extra metre and a half of beam, if you like. Uh, helps me to keep a closed leech when I'm sailing downwind, just gives a bit more power from the spinnakers. I'm quite excited about adding these actually. Um, and then the final thing we can look at is the keel, which is back through there. We're here now in inside the keel box, which again is a bit of a unique thing. Um, none of the rest of the fleet can easily get inside theirs. Now, on Medallia, we cant the keel, we, I, cant the keel, um, using a really simple system of ropes, block and tackle, and then I have an electric winch behind that box there. Obviously, using ropes and block and tackle and electric winch, I don't have the power that I hydraulic ram has, which means that I need a much longer head on the keel to get a bigger lever so that I've got the power to move the keel from side to side. Uh, and because of that, there is an entire section of the boat that is uh, dedicated to housing the keel. And this is completely open to the water, so it's full of water all the time. When I first started sailing the boat, it completely freaked me out because you can just hear water in the boat all the time. And when you really start going, it's like a washing machine in here. But I've learned to tell the difference in sound between water that is in the boat and water that's not in the boat and water that should be in the boat and water that shouldn't be in the boat. Uh, and that's, that's what I've learned in the last year and a half of sailing this beast. Um, so it's quite hard to move the keel and it's quite slow. It's definitely, I'm at a disadvantage with this system. But the bonus is, you know, it's so simple. I'm really not going to have a problem with mechanical breakdown or anything like that. You know, we can replace blo blocks, tackles, I can take new lines. So actually for me, where I am in my first Vendée, this is a really safe and secure system to have.